From tree to treated, at Vuga Timbers, we take extra care to comply with the requirements set out by the South African National Standards, also referred to as SANS. To ensure that these standards are met with every procedure, from planting to production, we control the whole process. Firstly, careful planning goes into selecting eucalyptus seedlings to be planted. These type of trees grow and flourish in high rainfall and calculated soil conditions. Depending on their end use, they reach their growth potential between 7 and 13 years. Once they have reached maturity, a specialized team harvests the trees. The barks are stripped off and the timber left to dry for 6 to 8 weeks. The timbers transported to a yard and weighed on a weigh bridge. Known as runners, poles are used to assist the workers when they cross-cut the straight poles. To ensure the final product complies with the required specification, a quality check is done on every piece of timber entering into the pole plant. In addition to end-user requirements like ESCOM and municipalities, Quality checks adhere to strict SANS 754 requirements. Workers then check for sweeps, crooks, knots, chainsaw marks, bark and crack marks at the surface as well as both ends of the timber and damage due to extreme weather conditions. Each piece of timber is cross-cut to match the length and diameter size required. Gang nails are then put on the timber to prevent cracking once treated and in service. Once all quality checks have been performed, the timber is ready for the drying process. The drying process plays a very important role in the longevity of the timber. There are two distinct drying methods, air stack and kiln drying. Because it is a lengthy process, the air stack drying method is usually used when timber is not in immediate demand. This is a great way to ensure there is always stock on hand. For air drying, the timber is stacked in a cross stack manner to ensure and increase proper airflow. On the first day of stacking, the date, length, diameter and quantity is displayed on a stack ID tag. All stacks will be closed off within one month. With the use of an electronic moisture meter, this information is updated with every monthly check to closely monitor the drying process. The other drying method used for longer poles and cross arms is by letting the timber dry in a kiln. Before kiln drying starts, the moisture content of the timber is measured on the trolleys using an electronic moisture meter. This will determine the kiln drying time in the kiln. The timber is loaded onto trolleys to enter the kiln. A temperature probe is inserted to monitor the corn's temperature. The dry bulbs within the kiln monitor the heat. This is done by controlling the main heat exchangers as well as the boosters. The kiln's drying schedules are automated and will start and stop by itself when the applicable drying time has been reached, going through several critical stages in the process. Forced air with fans in the kiln moves through the air stack. Through the use of steam, moisture is introduced through the humidification pipe. With the implementation of the next heating phase, the room temperature rises from 50 to 85 degrees Celsius. To ensure the timber is dried evenly, the direction of the airflow constantly changes from clockwise to anti-clockwise. When the wet bulb registers that the air moisture has reached a certain point, the vents will open and release the moist air and pull in more dry air from outside. The process is repeated until the desired moisture content is achieved. 
The final equalization process will then take place, where the room temperature is brought down from 85 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. The dry timber is taken out of the kiln. Previously selected sample poles with ingoing moisture will then be used to obtain final moisture content by using the oven drying method in accordance with SANS 5984. To draw samples, it has to be taken midpoint 150 mm apart and 75 mm deep. The test specimen is placed in an airtight bottle. These bottles are then weighed. It is then heated in the oven at about 102 degrees Celsius for a minimum of 6 hours. The dry weight of the test specimen is then weighed once again. The difference between the weight is then calculated to obtain the final moisture content percentage. The process of kiln drying also sterilizes the poles, ensuring all fungal spores are killed and that the shrinkage of the pole from drying is done in a controlled manner, causing smaller cracks around the pole. The smaller cracks will also assist chemical penetration into the timber. Treating timber that isn't properly and adequately dry could lead to numerous challenges and defect products. The pole is also treated with the correct amount of preservative so that it will not crack after treatment. The timber will be treated with either creosote or copper chrome arsenate, also known as CCA. The minimum temperature for the creosote while under pressure is 80 degrees Celsius. Strength testing occurs in sample batches once the drying process is done. If requested, the poles are then individually drilled prior to treatment. The timber is placed onto a trolley and pushed into the cylinder before the door is sealed. Through the use of a vacuum pump, an initial vacuum is drawn to open the timber's cells and draw the air out of both the cylinder as well as the timber cells. To ensure the air is extracted from the cylinder as well as the wood cells, the vacuum is maintained. This makes it easier for the timber to be suffused with a preservative under a negative pressure. The initial vacuum is maintained while the cylinder is flooded with preservative from the working tank until it is full. This ensures that there is no air or vapor compressed and trapped at the top of the vessel. A pressure cycle is then introduced to ensure proper penetration. The amount of preservative to be added is calculated beforehand. The calculation is based on the volume of the timber in the cylinder and its intended use. The pressure is gradually raised to a specific level and maintained until the required amount of preservative has been pumped into the timber from the measuring tank. The measuring tank's float level is used for readings. Once the pressure is released, the cylinder is emptied. This is done by pumping the preservative back into the working tank where it will create an overflow into the measuring tank. The final vacuum is then drawn to get rid of any excess chemicals inside the timber. This is done to reduce tripping and leaching of the excess chemical. Once the level indicator on the measuring tank has stabilized, a final reading is taken to verify that the calculated volume of preservative has been retained by the timber. The cylinder door is then opened. The total cycle time is about 1 hour and 40 minutes. The trolley with the pressure-treated timber is pushed out to the storage area. For every charge, 13 samples will be selected to test and ensure that the correct penetration of chemicals is achieved. Retention is also verified on all poles in the charge. Once both checks have complied with the strict requirements, the timber will undergo what is referred to as the 100% inspection. During the 100% inspection, the timber will be rolled out onto runners so that every pole can be inspected individually. 
The timber is graded and inspected according to the precise customer requirements. To ensure conformity, penetration of the preservative chemicals is checked on every pole. At this stage, the identification tags are placed on the poles. The timber is now ready to be dispatched. The procedure for handling, auditing and stacking of new wooden transmission poles is done according to ESCOM's DPC 34-1475. When it comes to storage of poles at construction, there are specific guidelines to follow. They should be stacked neatly, parallel to each other, on top of sufficient horizontal lying, base supports, on even ground. All poles at the warehouse should be cross-stacked at least 150 mm above the ground. The poles and cross arms are to be stacked at a 90 degree angle to the base supports. Sufficient base supports are to be used to prevent bowing and breakage. Poles and cross arms are to be stacked together in their lengths and pole top diameters. A stack is to be of one size only. The stack height shall be limited to 3 meters. Sufficient spacing shall be allowed between poles to provide adequate ventilation. The maximum storage time allowed for cross stacked poles in the same position is 6 months. Before the truck is loaded, a final inspection is done to check for the quantity, size and presence of all required identification marks. The truck is ready to leave the yard if it has been issued with a valid dispatch note and other necessary documentation. A proper maintenance plan is vital to the durability and longevity of the poles. At Vuga Timbers, poles are manufactured to world-class standards. Our experienced team's valuable knowledge forms part of our aim to supply you with high-quality wooden poles to suit your specific needs. While we take the utmost care to ensure you receive our poles manufactured to first-rate standards, it is important to emphasize that a proper maintenance plan is vital to ensure the durability and longevity of the poles. If you would like to know more about our suggested maintenance plans, when and how to replace poles, as well as choosing the right pole for you, feel free to contact us. Vuga Timbers, we are your solution.